on March 3rd, the White House um, released uh, the interim national security strategy. Um, and in this, as well as all the other major foreign policy pronouncements that the administration has made, democracy was featured as a, as a priority. Um, in, in the national security strategy, it noted that democratic nations are increasingly challenged from outside by antagonistic authoritarian powers. Reversing these trends is essential to our national security. And the strategy goes on to say that ensuring our national security requires us to lead and sustain a stable and open international system underwritten by strong democratic alliances, partnerships, multilateral institutions, and rules. Now, in Africa, of course, the issue of democracy and governance um, is laced through uh, a lot of the discussion around security and stability. And, um, and so I thought to get us started, I would do a quick overview of um, some of the trends that we're seeing on the continent with regards to democracy and, con uh, and conflict. So I'm gonna share a few slides. There are really three main overarching points that I would uh, want to throw out for our consideration. The first is that democracy is under duress on the continent. This slide captures the trends we've seen in governance uh, on the continent since the end of the Cold War. And what we can see is that um, in the years after the Cold War, there was a dramatic decline in the number of authoritarian uh, leaning governments on the continent. Uh, and uh, this was uh, matched by an increase in the number of democratic leaning governments. This plateaued uh, in the in the mid 2000s for a number of years. And we saw another bump up around uh, 2010. Um, and the expectation was we would continue, continue to see a divergence in the numbers of democratic leaning versus autocratic leaning governments on the continent. That didn't happen. Uh, there, there tended to be another uh, period of stagnation. And in the last few years, we've seen a dramatic decline in the number of uh, democratic leaning governments. Uh, it's, it's gone down from 31 out of the 54 countries to 25 today. Inversely, we've seen a bump up in autocratic leaning countries from 23 to 29, just in the last couple of years. So um, for the first time in, in more than a decade now, there are more uh, governments in Africa that are autocratic leaning rather than uh, uh, democratic leaning. There's a number of reasons for this. Uh, let me just tick, tick uh, through a few of these. Um, you know, Africa deals with the legacy of big man politics where the individual supersedes the institutions and is able to um, uh, circumscribe the, uh, the rule of law. Um, Africa has really struggled with the, the evasion of term limits since, especially since 2015. We've seen uh, 13 leaders evade term limits since that time. It's contributed to a situation today where we have 12 uh, leaders who've been in power for more than 20 years. Um, we've seen a resurgence of politicized uh, security sectors. Some of this is in support of some of these uh, autocratic leaders. Um, in other instances, we've seen a, a more overt uh, uh, assertiveness on the part of militaries to, um, to govern. Uh, we're seeing this uh, in, of course, in Mali with the coup there, but uh, in Sudan, Burundi, Zimbabwe, uh, and a host of other countries, uh, the militaries are playing an active role in politics. We've also seen an increased uh, role of external actors who are, um, uh, who uh, for the most part are authoritarian leaning and are, are, are trying to uh, use their leverage to uh, prop up allies and uh, authoritarian models on the continent. We've seen an explosion of disinformation, which has undermined trust in uh, democratic governance. And we've seen a decline 
in the political will at the regional and international level uh, to support democratic norms and, uh, and democratic processes uh, on the continent, even though the, um, you know, the, the goal of democracy is written in to the charters of um, the AU and a number of the regional economic communities. All right, the second point, overarching point I would throw out is that um, there's a strong link between autocracy and instability on the continent. And this graphic shows us a couple of things. Uh, the first that I highlight is there are 16 African countries that are currently facing armed uh -huh. conflict. Um, and 12 of the 16 are in autocratic leading countries. In other words, three quarters of the countries facing armed conflict um, have autocratic leaning government. Uh, this highlights the fact that most African conflict is domestic in origin, uh, reflects a breakdown in the political uh, uh, in, in, the, in the political system's ability to reconcile competing interests, um, facilitate you know participation, competition, um, and power sharing, and and the ability to facilitate um, successions. Um, uh, indeed of the nine autocratic countries that are in conflict today, seven of them have leaders who have either come to power through a coup or by evading term limits. And so there's a perpetual um, crisis of legitimacy in these countries that um, creates grievances and, uh, and, and then ultimately requires uh, an elevation in levels of suppression for 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 that regime to stay in power. The graphic also shows us here that there are four um, democratizing countries that are facing conflict today. Those are the light green striped countries. All of those, in contrast uh, to the political conflicts uh, that that I was referring to, all of these are facing militant Islamist group insurgencies. So a different type of, of challenge um, uh, that uh, uh, requires a different set of uh, responses. Um, another way of uh, capturing this is that we see a strong parallel in the pattern of numbers of autocratic leaning uh, governments on the continent with uh, countries in conflict. And I think what's noteworthy here and often goes unnoticed is that we've seen a dramatic increase in the numbers of countries in conflict in Africa since 2010. In 2010, there were just seven African countries in conflict. Today, there are 16, as I said earlier. So we see more than a doubling of countries in conflict just in the last 10 years. Uh, and so reflects a increasingly unstable uh, state of affairs, you know, 16 I-54 is, is, is 30 percent of Africa's countries are now facing armed conflict. Um, when we look at this uh, uh, breakdown of armed conflict by governance type, we see the striking pattern that um, nearly 60 percent of all autocracies on the, con on the continent are, are facing armed conflict. This compares to about a quarter for all semi-authoritarian and democratizing governments. And, um, and we see none of the nine uh, African democracies currently facing armed conflict. So a strong governance feature to the patterns of conflict on the, on the continent. The third and uh, final overarching point uh, that I would uh, kick us off with is to recognize that these patterns of governance and stability have more far-reaching uh, stability implications on, on the continent. Uh, a few examples here are that, uh, you know, eight out of the top 10 countries of origin for Africa's uh, 
uh, record numbers of uh, forcibly displaced persons um, have, have autocratic cleaning governments. Nine of the 10 uh, African countries facing the most acute food insecurity have autocratic cleaning governments. And then inversely, uh, when we look at the uh, investment projects that the US uh, Development Finance Corporation has supported, these are private investments uh, in Africa over the last five years, 85% of these have gone into countries that are democratizing or, or democracies. Um, this isn't too surprising in that investors want to put their money where there's stability and there's a respect for rule of law. That's a pattern we've seen globally for many years where investment uh, will go to countries that uh, typically have a, a stronger rule of law. <clears throat> so just to um, conclude, there's often a uh, assumption that there's a trade-off between democracy and stability in Africa. But when we look at these patterns of governance and conflict, we find um, the opposite is actually true, that most of the instability we're seeing in Africa is uh, emerging from autocratically led uh, governments. Um, and in fact, uh, the more stabilizing um, uh, option is, is, is through democracies. Um, and so, uh, that's an important template for us to keep in mind here as we move forward and talk about uh, U.S. security cooperation and uh, its uh, uh, applications on the continent.